Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pod. Rare celebrity interviews. Indie music. MadPod.com. Your global audio internet connection. Coming up on MadPod.com. Hey, this is Jay Donnelly from MadPod.com, and on this week's show, we have an exclusive interview with Thomas Dolby. Shadow has an exclusive interview with the man blinded by science, and he talks about the future is podcasting. Thomas, what's your take on Top 40 radio these days compared with 20 years ago? I don't listen to Top 40 radio these days, so I'm really not qualified to answer that. But it, it doesn't really appeal to me. I, you know, I don't listen to very much of it. Occasionally, I hear a hit that I like. Occasionally, I'll focus on just one piece of a song. You know, like I, I don't know. I, I, you know, personally, that's not where I look for inspiration. I look for inspiration on uh, satellite radio now, which I think is much more varied. Uh, on internet radio stations and, and podcasting, when it becomes a collective program from from Santa Monica, uh, I'll podcast that and take it to the gym with me. So uh, you know, I tend to reach a little bit further in than than standard top forty radio. Twenty years ago, I wouldn't say you know radio had a white night. I'd say that already. Radio was in a state where, um, you know, computer-generated playlists were starting to dominate. Uh, you know, it was all about keeping up with the, the front runners. It was all about the, uh, the ads and the rotation and so on. DJs were not really choosing their own songs. Uh, you didn't get a sense of, you know, a single guiding intelligence behind the playlist. It felt like big corporations were already involved. I know a lot of people complain about how it's become consolidated, you know, by a few big companies now, and that certainly, I don't think, is a good thing for radio. Your global audio internet connection. J.A. Donnelly and Shadow Steel. MadPod.com. Don't get mad, get media. MadPod. All right, our buddy Joe Klein, the voice guy, did this commercial in 1983. Inside Dr. Decibel's secret laboratory, something has gone amiss. Nurse! Nurse! What is it, Doctor? I can't see! Oh, oh my God! He's been blinded by science! The end of a brilliant career? Blinded with science! Or the beginning of a five-song Harvest Mini LP? Thomas Dolby's Blinded by Science. On record and high quality XDR cassettes from Capital. It's all right, Doctor. At least you can still operate. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere off the coast of reality. NASPOD.com. Born in Cairo, Egypt, and joining us live coast-to-coast coast from Northern California, vocalist, songwriter, engineer, composer, and producer of computer-generated rock and self-directed videos, Thomas Dolby. Welcome, Thomas. A true pleasure, sir. Thank you, Shadow. Nice to be here. It's wonderful to have you here as well. Your most inclusive website falls under the heading Flat Earth Society at thomasdolby.com, appearing at the Mighty 119 Club, Utah Street, San Francisco, along with Sony Music Japan artists Bokum Welt, and DJ Safety Scissors. What does the show consist of, Thomas? Yes, well, I've, I've been wanting to get back to the one-man show that I used to do in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, I had this insane show using all of these infernal machines where it's basically me versus the machines, and that was in the days when machines were the size of refrigerators and tended to break down every two minutes. Um, and I used to tour little clubs in Europe playing this one-man show and that was where a lot of my earliest songs came from songs like Leipzig is calling you and Europa and the Parrot Twins and uh, having not played any music for the last few years I really felt a strong compulsion to reconnect with those original songs and that original music so it seemed like the appropriate way to go was to revive the one-man show now how about additional forthcoming dates uh, yeah, well, uh, my next concert is actually in San Francisco next Thursday at the Mighty. Uh, and then in April and May, I'm playing a bunch of different places. Um, House of Blues, Anaheim on the 12th of April. Uh, Canyon Club, Agora Hills on the 14th. Portland, the Aladdin on the 20th of April. Phoenix Underground in Seattle on the 22nd of April. Then in May, I'm over to the East Coast. Joe's Pub on the 3rd and 4th of May in New York City. Uh, Sellersville Theater in Pennsylvania on the 5th. Ram's Head in Annapolis on the 7th. On the 8th, 
of Mayhem at the Birchmere, Alexandria, Pennsylvania. And on the 11th, the Club Cafe in Pittsburgh. And I think there's going to be a Detroit gig right after that. I don't have the, the date set yet, and possibly also Asheville, uh, North Carolina. And then I'm off to Europe where I'm playing some festivals with Depeche Mode. That's a very comprehensive roster of dates, Thomas. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I'm really enjoying being back on stage again. Uh, it's great to reconnect with my music and with my core audience. I'm sort of amazed when I look down into the audience that there are people my age who remember me from the first time around. And there's also people in their 20s and, and even late teens sometimes that seem to know all the words to my songs. So I'm kind of amazed that uh, this interest in my music has persisted all this time when I've been away. Thomas, let's go back. You were born of British parentage. Your dad was a British archaeologist, something I always wanted to do. So I take it your folks were always on the move. Well, my, my dad's speciality is Greek pots, and so we used to travel around the Mediterranean a lot, and so I spent time in Greece and uh, Italy, um, on the water, and also went to school in France for a while. And uh, it was a great pleasure to be able to travel with him. And as time went on, I realized that I had a lot in common with him. He was also a poet. Uh, he loved the, the stories and the mythology behind the Greek pots. And um, over time, I came to realize that I was really very like him. We just chose different media to express ourselves. Thomas, you began your musical career as keyboardist with the arty post-punk band Bruce Woolley and the Camera Club and the Lena Lovitch Band between 1979 and 1980. Thomas, how did you get the break to join your first commercial group? I used to answer ads in a, in a British music paper called Melody Maker, and uh, they advertised for a keyboard player, and uh, I joined this guy, Bruce Woolley, who is a great songwriter and singer. Uh, he was one of the original members of the Buggles, and he'd gotten quite successful in the business because he co-wrote the song Video Killed the Radio Star. And so based on that, he got a, a record deal, and uh, I helped him put the band together. And my first tour of the USA when I was 19 years old was actually with Bruce Woolley uh, supporting Lena Lovitch. Now, Lena at the time had a uh, couple of hits of her own, and I wrote a song for her called New Toy that was very big in the colleges and clubs um, at that time. It's around about 1980. And uh, I switched from Bruce's band to Lena's band and did another tour of the U.S. And uh, by then, there was enough interest from record labels that I was able to get my own record deal and uh, make my first album. You know, being a technical person myself, Thomas, I can really appreciate the fact on how masterful you created a persona due to skillful marketing and promoting yourself as a kind of mad scientist, an egghead that had successfully harnessed the power of synthesizers and samplers, using them to make catchy pop and light electro-funk. What a novel idea. You know, it's interesting you should say that. You've obviously been Googling me, Shadow. What I find in this age of the Internet is that if somebody writes a, a biography, it sort of... It, it, it filters out and it ends up everywhere. And uh, this actually came about because somebody mistakenly wrote in a biography of me once that I was born in Cairo. And that idea has now spread all across the Internet. And people often say that's where I was born, which is not actually the truth. I was born in London, England. Um, so I'm a Cockney. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I mean, it, it's sort of interesting um, also that, that you say that. I never viewed it as skillful marketing. Uh, I always viewed it as... You know, I started making records in an age when people like, um, see, Simon Le Bon or Sting or Adam Ant were the big pinups. And I thought, well, I'm never going to compete with them in the, in the handsome boy stakes. Um, so I may as well just stick with my roots, which was I'm from an academic family. Uh, we're sort of bohemians and academics and, and eccentrics. And that was the, the image that I went with. And it happened to coincide. 